Happy National Rum Day to you. Hopefully you are enjoying some rum on this fine day, and if you're not, go get some rum. Start drinking, it's time. Today I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite producers of American agricole style rum. This is Kohana. You can see the bottles here in front of me. Kohana comes to us from Oahu, Hawaii, and they produce a Hawaiian agricole style rum. If you're not familiar with rum terms, let me explain it to you. So, the majority of rum you find out on the market is distilled from molasses. Molasses is a byproduct of the sugar making process. Agricole rums come to us from fresh pressed sugarcane juice. This is some sugarcane that I pulled from my yard here in Arizona. And you're probably thinking I'm crazy for growing sugarcane in Arizona, but it actually grows extremely well here. In fact, if you look back through the agricultural archives of Arizona, you'll find photos from 1915, 1910, of huge sugarcane crops here in Arizona. So there is a history of sugarcane in Arizona, which a lot of people wouldn't know. Uh, I grow a few different varieties here in my yard. I have a blackstrap variety. I have a couple Hawaiian red varieties that I grow. It grows really well here in Arizona. It also grows really well in Hawaii. And Kohana has embraced that Hawaiian sugarcane. They didn't go to Martinique and grab sugarcane or Barbados and grab sugarcane. They went with the sugarcane that has historically grown on the Hawaiian Islands for hundreds of years. And Kohana has done such a great job of embracing everything about the history and culture of what has grown and what has developed on the Hawaiian Islands. Kohana is extremely transparent about the rums. They do not add sugars, they don't dose, they don't, uh, there aren't any other additives or caramel coloring, things like that. What you see is what you get. And you can see that with these bottles. Look at how sexy these are. The rum is the start of the show, which is what I love. I mean, look at that. It looks like a golden Hawaiian sunset. This one, look at that deep mahogany color. Just absolutely beautiful. And they make a statement when they're behind your bar. They're classy and like I said, just sexy. So let's get into the rums. As I said, everything is grown on Hawaii. These are state grown. So they have about 40 acres currently of sugarcane they grow at Kohana. Everything is as they call it, grass to glass. Sugarcane, grass, fresh pressed, fermented, distilled, and then they create these beautiful rums. So we're currently at about 40 acres that they grow there. I know they're planning on expanding that. They then create these barrel-aged rums that you see in front of me. They also have a white agricole rum, which I don't have right now. I ran out of it. It's called Kia. It's awesome for uh, traditional daiquiris. It's awesome, neat. So check out Kia if you have the chance. As for their barrel-aged expressions, they have Coho, which is this golden, beautiful golden, 45% alcohol by volume. They also have Koa, which is their cask strength. Uh, this one, 59.2%, so about 120 proof. And something really cool that I love about what they do on the side of their bottles, you turn it on the side and you see the cane variety of the sugar cane that was used to make the rum that is inside this bottle. So this is the Menulele cane variety of their Koa expression. This is also Menulele cane variety of their coho expression. If I go over here, I have a koa expression, so it's just the same expression as this one, but this is the pilami cane variety. So you have a different cane variety in the same expression. This one is 58.1%. So you may be thinking, what, is that, what does the cane variety have to do with it? Well, you may find a cane variety, and they grow about 30, I believe it's over 30 different varieties at Kohana, but you may find a cane variety that you really love a certain note about. Maybe it has a little bit of a butterscotch on the palate, or maybe it has uh, a real floral nose, or maybe there's a big tobacco leaf presence. So if you find that one cane variety you really like, you can then look through for that one cane variety throughout Kohana's expressions. So it's just an added level of information and transparency on exactly what is going into these bottles. This is their Coca Leica rum, which is crafted with cacao and honey, uh, amazing dessert rum, poured over ice cream, just drink it neat, it's great all around. They also do a barrel aged honey. And I highly recommend if you buy one of their rums, get the barrel aged honey, make yourself a Kohana rum old fashioned, do like two and a half ounces of any of their rums, throw in a half ounce of their barrel aged honey, few dashes of bitters, and you have an amazing Kohana barrel aged rum. Highly recommend it. So you see some of the rums here in front of me. I wanna to talk to you right now about this rum specifically. And the reason I wanna to talk to you about this rum is because it is one of the most unique rums I've had in the last 
the last three or four years, but really one of the most un unique rums I've ever had. Uh, and that is because of how it's finished. So as I said, Kohana really has embraced their Hawaiian history and the culture. And th one of the ways they really took it another level is they created a koa cask. And if you're not familiar with koa, koa is an indigenous tree that grows on the Hawaiian Islands. And it has a long history in Hawaii. They used to make canoes out of it. They made weapons out of the koa wood. Nowadays, they make furniture out of koa wood. They make jewelry out of koa wood. You can see there's a little koa chip here on the bottle. Uh, it's, it's got a, just a beautiful grain structure and, and just beautiful colors that come out of the wood. This uh, little chip here says Koa Cask 291 of 437. So that just means that it was bottle 291 of 437 bottles that came from that Koa Cask. And where'd they get a Koa Cask? They had to find someone to make one. Koa is a traditionally hard wood, so it wasn't easy. And to give you an idea of what went into making that, to ship a barrel over an oak barrel, a used whiskey barrel, to ship it over to Hawaii for them to age the rums in maybe cost $300. For them to create this one koa cask cost more than four thousand dollars so it was not a cheap experiment by any means but it was so worth it with what you got out of that koa cask so i want to give you some tasting notes on this so uh, before we get into that though look at the color on this just a deep red amber it's just beautiful and the red notes on this in the color just stand out among all the other ones. And that obviously is coming from that Koa cask. So on the nose, just a lot of initially floral notes, uh, jasmine, honeysuckle. There's also like a butterscotch component and, and a, a, a sweet cut grass. And, and what I mean by that is w when you mow the grass, and it's a cool morning and there's dew on the grass and you mow the grass, you get that sweet, fresh cut grass smell, love it. And, and you get those notes in these really, really well done agricoles, especially like something like this, the Hawaiian agricole. And something else that I, I, I'm gonna take a step back for a minute, and that's something I love about what they've done with this koa cask. So they've really embraced the terroir of their sugar cane. And it's something that I've always enjoyed in wines. Uh, in a wine, you get a lot of that terroir where you're getting to taste the, the dirt, that the, the soil that the grapes grew in. Um, you're tasting that air and the climate of where those grapes grew. I find that with mezcals. You, you taste the plant, the soil, the desert air, or the sea air of where those plants were growing. Um, scotches. I notice it in some of the peated scotches when it's a well-done peated scotch. And, you get some of that brininess from the peat, uh, the, you know, of course the smokiness, but the, the brininess that comes through or the iodine that comes through, some of those notes that kind of take you to that place of where the, the peat was on the ground or where the mezcal, uh, where the agave plant was growing or where the grape was growing. Here you get that terroir from the sugarcane and it growing in Hawaii. And the koa cast takes that to another level, it's a tree that's growing on Hawaii. And they took the wood from that tree and poured the sugar, fresh pressed sugar cane juice that was fermented and distilled and poured that into that cask that was made from that coal wood. So it's just taking it all to another level. So let's dive into the tasting on this. Mm. Oh, I love it, it's just, it's so unique. So the koa tasting notes on this, huge praline component, uh, just really pronounced more so than really any cask finish I've ever had on a rum before. Uh, there's also a, a really like a orange blossom note, a cherry cola note, and then it kind of evolves back into that praline and a, the praline finish, but also like a tobacco leaf. So you get some tobacco leaf and praline and uh, just a nice oily mouth feel and then just kind of dries a little bit. Oh, just a really unique expression. Uh, and like I said, it's that terroir where you taste maybe a little bit of that sea air. Uh, maybe you s smell or taste a, a hint of that uh, plumeria perfume, something like that, where it just takes you to that 
place where this sugar cane is grown. I, I love what they're doing at Kohana. Like I said, they're transparent in what they're doing. They're doing stuff the right way. It's Kohana Rums. If you live here on the West Coast, there's a great chance you can order the rums and have it delivered right to your house. If you're on the East Coast, you, you may not be so lucky, but the West Coast, uh, you can get the ship. They also, in California, I know they have a uh, number of stores that are selling their product. So it's Kohana Rums. I'll post information uh, to their website so you can check out more about what they're doing. Kohana Rums out of Oahu, Hawaii. Check them out. Until next time, cheers.